Kuru. My name is Fatiha Sharia. My contact information is research. Publishing media at gmail dot com. We're talking about Dr. Tudor. We are Zoom available. Dr. Tudor. It's my educational platform where I tutor. I tutor, uh, I can tutor at any age. I like the college level undergraduate because you're talking about a young adult and directions that we have to move in. So we are mentally developed to understand what I'm saying at a high level. Now, I also, under, I also like the little children, right? So we get busy at any age, but that, that college level, we young adults. We don't really know what to do. Eventually, we're about to take care of ourselves. We're no longer going to have no one to take care of us. So we're not prepared for that. So we have to learn that. As a child, you know, we still don't understand, I would say, responsibility. So that's why, but at any age, I get busy, Dr. Tudor, with Zoom available. All you have to do is email me again. Okay. We have to understand. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of all of his righteousness righteousness now I do want to say let, let's, let's look at this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. So before you do anything with your life, you have to seek first the kingdom of God. So then they try to make God spooky. Oh, it's a ghost. So if God is spooky and all of his righteousness his, meaning it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a human being that owns something. You see what I'm saying? I love that, right? So this is what I want to talk about. When you talk about now, I'm Muslim, not Christianity, it's not no devil. It's what we Muslim. Jesus, all the prophets talked about Islam. So what I just want to want you to understand, this is I believe. If you go to the book of Matthew, this is going to be chapter 6, verse 33. Now, 32 or 34, the verse in that book said, don't worry about tomorrow because you're dealing with the evils and the wickedness of today. So let's look at the wickedness. Now, I'm coming into, now first of all, I do want to thank the university for allowing me to really... <laughs> right, to pay to come, right, not that I'm not qualified, I'm highly qualified, but again, we're black in America, but I do want to thank the university for allowing me to, you know, come on their campus and learn, but then you got, see, it's always the people. We can build a righteous institution, but if we don't have the people that are righteous, 
but a devil's implementing policies in the governing of righteous institutions. The Quranic scripture says that how can wicked people maintain the mosque? Talking about the Kaaba, I believe at that time. How can wicked people maintain the Kaaba when they're wicked? So you might see like, so we don't allow no devils in here, right? No, you can't come in. If, if it's any type of negative energy and I feel it and I see it, we're not going to pamper it. You know, you, you, you can't participate. We'll have to sacrifice everything, right? But they still come in, right, because I don't own where I am. So you might see things. I think in the other classroom, they had it like real deep demonic. Let's write that word on there. They had it demonic, demonic. They had it like demonic. But they had the erasers and the markers. Now, you could say, well, oh, that's conspiracy. No, this is what I'm trying to tell you. See, we have a history of slavery. And come on, brother and sister. If we killing little children, what has that done to us mentally over a long time period? So they had the markers here, and they can communicate through the cameras, and I'm not even being here. And so they didn't left. Like the last time, you know, again, we have a, I'm not going to say we have a serious gang problem, but when you have young black people and in our intelligence, and we now repping a color, and we are killed over a color, right? So, you know, as a Muslim or as a believer in the law, you know, we shun, we try to shun all them things. So, you know, they got the, the they'll have, like, they'll put, red marks on the board. It's just your brain and how you think. Long time ago, we talked about the planet. We're on the planet. Let me just, so you see how they leave the markings here. And it gets so crazy where they'll have a, they'll have a red, I think red is the color of the game. Now, I, I hate to speak about it because we don't like to bring that negativity around because we don't know. But they have like, like they, they, it's, it's so wicked. They have it marked because everything is a measure. They have it marked where I would end my sentence structure, and then they have like a red mark right here. Cause I'm about to move on. Like you know, there's a window here. We will have devils outside the window, right? So it's just these things. Now again, I'm not trying to cause a controversy, but a lot of times again. How, it, how, how have we killed ourselves? How, when you look at the media, and you might see on the media, well, such and such and such and such has committed suicide. No, I ain't committed no suicide necessarily. The chastisements of a law can become so severe. You understand what I'm saying? These are things that, you understand now, a crime has been crimes, have been committed against us. And the devil thinks that, well, the devil don't think that, but it's to get you out of your paradise. So I didn't want to really stress too much on that. And then, I mean, you know, you'll have people pick up on that and I'm not saying it's an accent, but that really makes no sense. And it's only because uh, we don't know. Okay, so, so what I want to say is, again, demonic, demonic. And uh, it's always with your back turned. You got to start learning about corners. And uh, I mean, I'm saying we're human beings. We come in peace. Is no peace. God said you love them when you love you love them when they love you not. So I'm just gonna give you one good example. If you go back to the very first lecture, we were talking about absolute values. And so, you know, you you when you notice, I had my back turned a lot of times to the door. And uh I think we had, I don't know if it was like, you know, sometimes a teacher or a professor and a student, they'll look alike. Right? So, you know, are you a student or are you a professor, right? So, you know, 
for the professor or whoever it was to come in. Now again, I'm not a professor, I'm just a student. So I don't have no authority and we're not trying to take over authority, you know, the mean black man. But always understand it doesn't matter at what level. Wickedness is wickedness. So, you know, to come in, because the door don't make no noise now. Now, of course, we have a camera, and then I believe we have cameras, but I always understand the brother in Florida, they had cameras. But they didn't have no cameras where they say he killed himself, and then before he killed himself, he took out all his insides and put in newspapers. They didn't have no cameras of that, but they had cameras going off. So these are things that we really don't have no control over. This is America. Okay. So I just wanted to, I wanted to make that note because again, I mean, brothers and sisters, if I'm watching you and say you're somewhere and then you have devils all around you making noise, that's going to affect me in my comfort zone where a lot has showed you to me. That's going to affect how I think. So I'm trying to create a certain type of uh, God environment. Okay. That's just to make a note of that. I wanted to say something about that. And again, since we just started talking, right, I took a look at the first couple of lectures, and uh, I'm not on point mathematically. I'm, really, I'm really not on point on nothing because, again, I stand here before you as a believer in the law, as a servant of God, and it's not really good for me as far as with God. How long... Was I iniquity before I said, well, now I'm Muslim? Oh, you do not understand. Let's go back to this, right? I want to know if this verse, this verse is in the Bible. Let's, let's look up this verse. For God gave his only begotten son. For God... Gave his only begotten son Bible verse. Let's see if this Bible verse is in the in the let's see if this is a verse in the Bible. Okay, they say it is, they say it's John 16. And the reason why I say let's see if this verse is in the Bible, because I was watching this this movie, right? You know, on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath, you know, it's a day of rest. The, the Sabbath, you really you can make the Sabbath any day because we so far gone into the devil calendar that we don't really know what day the Sabbath is. It's a really, really supposed to be. It's probably more of a spiritual Sabbath when you see certain things in the heavens. Let me make this point. Well, no, I'm, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to remember that. Inshallah. So it was the Sabbath, is, the Sabbath is from Friday night to Saturday night. So from Friday night, we shut everything down. We don't use no heat. We don't cook nothing or nothing. Now, it's not a day of fast. You can make it a day of fast. You know, that, that, that struggle to the beauty of all you're doing on the Sabbath. Yeah, you can, now even as a Muslim, we making prayer. We believe in the law all the time. But the Sabbath is you shut everything down. It's just God that day. Right? So God said, that's a day of rest. So I don't do nothing. I don't, you know, I might eat something if I've already had it cooked or I'll cook after the night go down on Saturday. But it's just a day of rest. Relaxation, relax, relax your mind. Right? And uh, so then at first I didn't do nothing. Then I started doing, uh, you know, we be so paranoid what God going to do, right? That, uh, uh, I started, you know, God said, well, you know, you can start watching movies now, right? You know, just to pass a little bit of time, right? So what movie? I was watching a movie. What movie was I watching? I was watching this movie with Samuel Jackson. And uh, one point in the movie, Samuel Jackson said, uh, God, grant me the strength to suffer the things I cannot change and grant me the strength 
to change the things that I can change. So I was like, yeah, that's so powerful. Because we can't listen. God say we pray for evil way more than we pray for good. Right? But we pray. We pray, you know, you know, these demons, right? Remove these demons from around me, Allah. But the, but but that's not a verse in the scripture, but that verse says, or that that parable, I don't even know what you would call that. But God grant me the strength to suffer the things I cannot change. Right? You wake up in American society, you can't change that. Grant me the strength. So that's not a that's not a verse in the Bible. It was someone that came up with that. But that's still just so very powerful, right? So you know, I, I you know, you know, we're not up in Europe looking at Bible verses or none of that, but you just that's just something to look at, right? So that's why I say is this verse in the in the Bible, but it is in the Bible. And they say it's John. They say it's John 3.16. Let's see what John 3.16 says. Now look now, listen to what these people are trying to tell me and you. Now we're going to roll with it. But initially, God ain't got no son. But how is this verse? Let's go to the first verse. Let's go to the first verse. Let's go to John. Let's just go to John chapter 3. Bismillah. Now, John chapter 3 starts off, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees. So we're talking about high priests. So we're talking about a Pharisee, right? Even though, well, it's still in the Kemet. It's still in the Kemet facilities. But this is going to be like 0K to 100K. Now, K stands for Kemet, and that's years. Right, so then you're talking about from 80 BK, yeah, well, no, 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 80 BK, and then you got, no, 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 <laughs> let me remember my jump, right, you got 80K, and then you got 108K, so 80K is when Kemet, before Kemet, how they do ACBC, and then AK is after Kemet. So now you got something called the Pharisees, and the Pharisees are just the high priests. And always understand now, when we talk about Kemet, Then you got the Kaaba right here. Right? Okay, so then they say we up in here somewhere. Right? This is where the Pharisees is, where this is supposed to be taking place. Now always understand Rome did come in at this time and sent a lot of these people to what they call the western coast of Africa. Sent a lot of people over here, so it's a riverway that go from right there to right there. So when Rome came in right here, it sent a lot of these people to the west coast of Africa. Let me put Kemet right here. And let me say this, right? When you talk about the Kaaba, and I always understand the Kaaba, as far as the phonics, Originate, I'm not going to say it originated from Kemet, but when you go to Kemet and you start looking at the hieroglyphics, the Ka means something and the Ba means something. I think the Ka means spirit and the Ba means, I, I, I don't know, but one of these, one of these signs has the symbol of an arm, right? Really, it could be an arm making dua, asking God for something. So that's real heavy. 
And again, that shows the connection between the people. But what I want you to understand is that when you look at this structure, it's just a, a square. And when you look at this structure, this is a square also, but it's a square made of four triangles. One, two, three, four. So they use the four triangles to create the square base. So they're, I would say they're not the same people. Now, it's the same mathematics. Even when you look at, well, you can't really get a good picture of it now because from the Caucasus Mountains, they came in and changed up the color. But if you look at, a, uh, if you go back in antiquity, and say you look at the rulers of Kemet and look at the black people in Arabia, they're not the same, same people. Now again, we're still talking about that 50,000 years where Brother Shabazz went into the jungles of East Asia. So that created a lot of physiological differences. So at one point, they were the same people. It's the same mathematics, but they're not the same people 6,000 years ago or whenever. I'm going to say 10,000 years, these structures, well, the Kaaba is older, but I'm going to say this is probably 10,000 years. So the mathematics is the same, but the people not the same, no longer. And what I would say is that these are stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked people. Now, this is me also. Now, I'm not saying are oh, they the Hamites and the Hamitians. And the, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that, listen, again, it's a vacuum. No, we're not all the same ethnicity. But no, we in black skin. We black people. Whether you acknowledge, that's your fault if you choose to not be black. No, we, even Caucasian people grafted from black people. They just don't have their skin color. Got to under okay, so we all black people. And I'm not saying that these people are not stiff-necked also. No, what I'm saying is that just in generality, these people are not the same, but they're the same. It's the same mathematics. Now, I'm going to get to a good point right here, right? When I say these people are not the same, let's look at that. Because again, we're talking about the structure, the people who built the structure. So, yeah, on one, okay, so when the Kaaba was built, we don't, okay, so let's use the variable. We don't know when the Kaaba was built. But we're going to say the Kaaba was built 18,000 years ago, right? So it's, you have a certain group of people that built the Kaaba. Talking about God or the creator of the heaven and the earth. Again, it's, this is heaven, stars, you can look up into the universe. I'm going to say Kemet, I'm going to say Kemet was like 10,000 years ago as far as the construction. So you have an 8,000 year difference. And if you could just look at the black man and black woman in America, how we first came to North America, 1555. And you look at us now, that's just 400 years. So now you're talking about the change in number of people, 8,000 years. That's real powerful. I love that. So you got the people that built the Kaaba, right? The people that built the Kaaba are not the same people as the people that built the pyramids in Kemi. But it's the same mathematics. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's still the base, the foundation is a square, right? So I say these people stiff-necked people because, yeah, the pyramid might be pointing to the heavens. It could be, right? It's just your understanding. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So even in that, that dazzle, right, instead of just making a square structure, well, you can look at it too now. It's an advancement in mathematics. I mean, I don't know, when I first seen it, just in my communication with God, right, God said, why would you use four triangles to make a square? Because the whole foundation, is, the whole purpose is the foundation. So, like, 
they showing you that the foundation is a square, but they're using four triangles to do that. Like, why would you do that, right? So, you know, again, we're not dumb. We're far advanced compared to anything that's going on now. So I don't want to just say that, but I would just say, like, just looking at it, I would say they were stiff-necked people. And then God said, well, look, if it was in righteousness and advancement of mathematics, how come them people are no longer here? God is not going to remove you if, if you're not stiff-necked or disobedient. You see what I'm saying? So you say, well, these people are not here. No, these people are still here. Right? But then you got to look. What are we talking about when we say still here? It's, never really no, it's not really no rulership. Yeah, God might bless certain people over other people. And the only real rulership is knowledge of God. You ain't got no knowledge of God, then you need to get out of the way. You ain't saying nothing. So, uh, that's something to take a look at. <laughs> so I say, right, okay, why did I say that, right? Okay, so let's get back focused. Let's get back focused. We're talking about, we're talking about, we're talking about ignorance. We're talking about wickedness. We're talking about how come we still don't know. So when we talk about the Pharisees, there was this is the book of John, New Testament, what they call the Injil. Well, it's not what they call the Injil, but it's the New Testament and that compilation Bible book. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So now we're talking about Caucasian people from Europe. They didn't get that knowledge from Moses, mathematics. So I say that because Nicodemus, Nicodemus know how to do a lot of things. He know how to melt iron. He know how to do explosives. He know how to, whatever you talking about, he mathematics. He real knowledgeable about what's going on. And he got knowledge of the law. That's the only thing. So you start saying, well, who is these people that they rewrote the Bible, then tricked it all up, got lies all in the Bible? Nicodemus. Right? That's the first verse. Then we're going to read verse 2 to give more clarity. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou does except God be with him. Let's see what Jesus said now. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, that don't really make sense, right? Because normally Jesus, Jesus is going to really check you well, Jesus, like when you come at Jesus all crazy, like, so the Bible, when the Bible give you Jesus and somebody come like, you know, you get people all the time, what they call them like FBI agents, CIA agents, police agents, uh, paid informants, people that infiltrate to cause mischief, right? So what the Bible does is that the Bible and giving you interactions, you can really see it with Jesus. They let you know whether this person is good or bad. So you can't really see that right here because like, you know, Nicodemus came to him and told him the truth. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot, okay, so he just, so, okay. So, Nic so Nicodemus is saying, you know, all praise, well, he didn't say all praise to a law. Well, he said rabbi, right? Or rabbi. But Rabbi is like my Lord. He said, my, what he called him? My son. Oh, that's wrong. Asalaamu Alaikum, Jesus, is the correct interaction. We know that thou art, I know you a teacher from Allah. 
Right? I, I wouldn't even say that, right? Because the Bible say, uh, you got to be cautious of people that flatter. But Jesus said, I, I only had that power because I'd have been born again. Right? But then where, where does it, okay, so let's look at this, right? Let's look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus is saying, Jesus, you have done all of these magnificent things in the name of God. And Jesus said, look, I only do them things because I have been born again. So I say to you, right, when you read the Bible and you read about Jesus, where in the Bible, the New Testament, where does it say that Jesus was born again, right? We know that Mary, Mary was a Muslim sister, and she took the steps, which it ain't even no steps. She was living the correct culture. She was a Muslim. So Jesus was born Muslim, right? Oh, okay. That's heavy, right? So Jesus was born Muslim. So that means down the line, in that genealogy, right, his, his lineage go back to David, right? And then King David go back to Adam. And then before Adam was God, right? So all of that's real heavy, right? Yeah, that's real heavy. We're not going to talk about that, right? Because we're we trying to stay focused. But that's something, that's something to really think about. That's something to really think about. Now, I think it's John 3.16. So we go to John 3.16, and let's see what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a, that's a mistrans, that's a severe translation from the original text because it is truth. We know it's true because it says whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You don't get no more, you don't get no more disciples of God than Jesus. Maybe Abraham. Apostle Paul was real tight, but they put Apostle Paul because of uh, because he was actually uh, uh, an opponent of Jesus. They make Apostle Paul more like flesh, and they make uh, they make Jesus. You know, Jesus walked on water, so they make him like more like a mastery of the flesh, right? But I would say throughout the entirety of the Bible, unless you talk about we had my one brother, uh, he was real nice. Was it Saul? I think it was Saul. I like King Saul, right? King Saul had some, he had some impediments, right? But, uh, okay. So, so Jesus is the tightest in the Bible as far as God, believe, a believer in the God. So if you follow Jesus' footsteps, if you do what Jesus did, then you will not perish. You will have everlasting life. So we, we know that to be true. But let's look at the first part. For God so loved the world. Now God did love the world now. I think in the book of Genesis, the first couple of verses, God saw what he had created and he said it was good. But love is a strong, that's a strong, I don't know, is that an adjective? Adverb. I think it might be an adverb. Love is a strong adverb that he gave his only begotten son. Now again, it, so it's not that it's not that the verse is incorrect. It's just an incorrect use coming from the original language into English. They might not even have English words that can describe what this verse is saying. Okay. God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son that we that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay. So we were talking about demons being demonic and how after 400 years plus brutality, human being brutality that we still have not learned. God then gave his only begotten son so that we believe in him and we still do not understand and we still come out here with doo-doo on our butt. So it's not good. It's very, very bad unless what does the Bible say? Unless you believe in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay. So I want I want just to start that off with that. That go that goes back to being stiff necked. So we have to learn. And we have to listen. And then we have to actually, what I call application. You have to actually do it. You can learn it. You can hear it. You can take it in. Then you can go on about your business. And you can do whatever you was doing. And just totally miss it. Okay. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Okay. So we're talking about math analysis. Math analysis. Now if you go to my internet site Let's go to the internet site. Right, it's one thing, like, okay, so let's look at application, right? Some called applied mathematics, which is also very good. I can tell you when you look at the internet site, right, so we can talk about it, but then let's just actually go to the internet site. So we go to www. Okay, FatihaDuwasharia.com. And then we go to we go to Research Library. Then if we go to the Research Library internet page, I have a couple things that I'm doing, the leadership conference. Let me see what I actually have up here. Now it's been a it's that still going on? Correct, so just so we understand, I give a little bit, a brief. Now we have kind of progressed. Now this is what it is, but we have progressed from this, right? So let's just go all the way. If you go all the way down, I got something. It's a children's seminar. This is when I was in South Florida. We started doing this actually very good whenever I it's not that I, I've been places and I didn't had a whole bunch of children in a big stadium right but I have talked to like one or two young black men and it's just real good but again you know it's a devil society so I don't you know well it's what God wants so whenever God wants to bring these things into fruition then that's what it is but the, 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 the speaking spell vernacular development, just learning how to articulate, communicate. I started really making a move on that in South Florida. And so we came out with the, the mathematical scale. So if you go to uh, www.fatihaduwasharia.com, 
And then go to research library. If you go all the way down, we have a number scale. And then as we evolve, we even got the hieroglyphic number scale. We call it writing intensive. That's kind of, you know, complicated as far as like the explanation behind all of that. But that's there, and that's, that's 100. Okay, but I say that because we're just talking about numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is all it really is. We don't include zero, right? Because until we start doing actual research on zero, we don't know what that is. Now, when I was using these numbers, God showed this to me. I didn't even know these were natural numbers. But, well, they're not natural numbers. It's what some people are calling natural numbers. But it's numbers. Right? And, and God say it's just these numbers right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We don't know what zero is, so we have to define what zero is. Right? But again, one tree, two apples, three clouds, and such and such and such and such. And you can go on to infinity with these numbers right here. Now, that's a good point, too, where zero comes in, is that you can't go from a single digit to a double digit continuously. Oh, that's hell of, that's heaven fire. That's deep. That's real deep. So, you know, and that didn't came out, right? But that's good. So uh, we just stay focused. Stay focused. So it's just a county system. So when you begin your journey, your mathematical journey, you don't know, they don't know. It's just it's it's what well, we supposed to be Negroes. Okay. But when you begin your mathematical journey, right, you'll come, you'll, you'll come to the Pharisees. We're not, we're not going to say the Pharisees. We're going to say the people that follow the Pharisees. Negativity, they're going to try to make you think you're stupid. Right? How, but how are we, well, on, on one level, if God then gave his only son and you still out here talking about what you're talking about and you ain't Muslim, you don't believe in God or nothing then yeah, you stupid. You see what I'm saying? That's why we still, they got the one scripture that says that we as believers in a law, we have to guard ourselves from, from a day where the evil that God has created for the wicked, it afflicts us too. That's why separation from American society is so important. Because when it comes, it's coming. And if we're still here or we're still around devils, then we're going to be consumed with the fire. Now, you might be a believer, right? And it's just your iniquity. You done had so much iniquity until you started believing. Not saying you're a disbeliever. I'm just saying your iniquity was so severe, regardless of how small you thought it was. It was severe iniquity, right? So now you Muslim and you righteous, but you ain't so, you like you can't like you know, God give me the strength to accept the things I cannot change. We believe, but we can't change it because that's God. We not God. Sound real crazy, brother? We not God. It's only one God. Only God can change our situation. So no matter how much we try, we Muslim, when we believe, nothing has changed. God grant me the strength to suffer the things I can. I love that jump. I still like, you know, I don't know, right? Okay, so, uh, so whenever you get to a point, oh, uh, you are, you are, you come from slavery, child slavery. You don't know. Get the hell on. Go back to picking cotton. Right? Just make you feel bad. You be like, damn. <laughs> no. You do know. They are lying to you. It's all in the See, it's trick knowledge. It's all an illusion. They done took, okay. So when you get to that point where they try to say you stupid and you don't know, all you have to do is come back to the number scale. 
and write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You do know. He just said you don't know. How you you don't know what that was, but if you take your time and come back and study it, then you'll be a master of it. And then look now. It's God. You believe in God. You don't believe in no God. Some of them don't. They don't believe in no God. So he didn't told you to get the hell on because you're dumb and you don't know what that is. You say, well, no. I'm not going to say Mr. Sharia didn't show me something, but through Mr. Sharia, God said, well, look, no, you do know. Just stay focused. Be patient. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. You do know. Now this is the mathematical scale. So if you go to that, that page on my internet site, you'll have it up there and it'll show you what's going on. Again, this is real good. Like, you know, we're older. But for your little children, okay, it's like, it's like mathematics is that musical instrument. And before you actually learn how to play songs, right, like to learn like as a child, to get an instrument and get some of them Stevie Wonder notes, right? Before you start playing Stevie Wonder on the trumpet, you just learn the notes, the notes, the, what, what the sounds make with the instrument. So that's all the numbers is. So always remember this now, because you have to master mathematics. You have to master mathematics. It's the language of communication. That's a good point too, right? They, they talk about, I'm going to tell you again, trick knowledge, how, how ignorant we are and why the wealthy, going back to the Pharisees, they stay wealthy and the masses of the people, me and you and all of us, nothing, eating each other. They tell you what? What language you should learn to communicate business, commerce, economy on the planet globally. <laughs> Right, so you got to learn Chinese, you got to learn English. This is a good way to bring this in here, right? You ever looked at, this is another way how they say we dumb, right? Especially the black man, black woman, child of slavery. You say, well, damn. You, you say, damn. This black man, my brother from Africa, he come over here, he's speaking fluent English, then he'll switch up on you and he speak his own language, even though it's in English alpha, it's in English caricatures. Or you look at the Chinese. The Chinese speak fluent English, some of them, but they speak in Chinese. So wherever, wherever you go on the planet, except the black man and black woman in America, and the Caucasian in America, and Europe, everybody else speaking English, and they speaking their own language, their indigenous language. So initially, as a, as a uh, not having that much knowledge, I was like, damn, they smart as hell. Like, that's actually real difficult <clears throat> to speak someone else's language fluently. Now, you communicating and writing. Look now, in India, these brothers and sisters writing books in English for me and you. But I got this one book. My brother, give my brother in Africa, and you know, I pray, I pray a law, continue to guide him, right? But you know, but he was again. He was talking about. Like, I, I, I like that brother, because for one, for what he's saying, right? And then he can just, oh, I had that knowledge. Like, we've been trapped off in the mark. We ain't really had no, all of our leaders have been leaders from slavery. That means that's just a confinement of a certain amount of knowledge, fighting that plantation, which is powerful on a whole separate level. But a lot of times, I'm not saying it's not necessary, but ain't none of that Muslim. I'm not saying that what this brother's saying is Muslim. But when you go back to Africa, it has a, slavery has no type of foundational Muslim in it. All we have doing slavery for us is a star. We might have two stars. No, we don't even have two stars. We just got one star. So whenever you see some pictures of some black people, Slavery, whether it's being, and look now, they didn't lynched. 
They done hung black people in large numbers. But the star was still there. So you got to understand what's going on. But we only had one star now, but it was there. And they doing all of this. And then they own laws. So that's illegal, right? Thou shalt not kill. But the star was there. Okay. So anyway, my brother one time was talking, he was just saying these black, like he can, he got, he got volumes of names of black men and women that he had read about in the history of, of Africa, like the entire African continent. It's not just, now we're not taking away from, from the, the African leaders that we do know, but it's not just uh, uh, Nelson Mandela or Winnie Mandela or my brother, uh, the one that they killed, right? I gravitate more towards him because he just looked like, you know what I'm saying? He looked like he just, he trying to, he trying to get himself free. So it's, 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 we have a whole lot of African leaders. So he, he was mentioning some leaders. So I got one of them books, right? And uh, this is my brother from Kenya. And again, again, Kenya is not a Muslim country. That's just the only problem with that. It, it's just not a Muslim country. When you read a couple of books about Kenya, and you again, again, you go back to the Bible, what Elam say. I don't know what book that is. I think it's the book of, uh, I think it might be the book of Jeremiah. It's one of them books where Elam saying, look, we go, Elam is the enemy. Look, we're going to get rid of all of this Adala worshiping and these having sex with these strange women. We're getting rid of all of that. And we're going back to what God said. But in these books that I read, first of all, the writer, he was Indian. <laughs> and uh, uh, in that struggle for Kenya, you got Indians in there getting killed for, for, for the African. Now, again, on, on some levels, it's business. No. No. I wish I could remember my brother's name. He a writer. And I can't think of his name just off the top. But in reading his books, or in reading that one book by him, he references that he learned English, or they, like, so, so Europe had came in and really took over Kenya. And you learn about uh, Jomo Kenyatta. Well, I like that Kenyatta, but you learn that Kenyatta, uh, you know, Kenyatta kind of, kind of. I, I don't know, brother. Kenyatta. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna disrespect him, but Kenyatta be messing with the Russians. Cause I got the other book. Oh, uh, that's a good. These are things I might reference later on. But I got this other book where Kenyatta that went to Russia to, to study during the time where now Russia ain't never had nothing to do with colonialism. Always got to understand his patience now. You know what I'm saying? So no, no, but. It is patience. Always understand. Now, I'm not saying, but the serpent was the most smoothest, the wisest in the garden. So he just sat back on Eve. Like, damn, Eve got a fat butt. You see what I'm saying? That's the devil, serpent. She got a fat butt. Right? That black woman in the garden. So he just sat back on her before he made his move. So during the colonization of Africa, Russia ain't had nothing to do with that. So Kenya has been colonized. And uh, so they trying to link up, because at that time, the only people that got weapons, besides Kemet and Arabia, now they ain't got, like, again, it's glitter, right? So they ain't, they ain't, they ain't done it like Europe. People cold, brother. You got to create that heat. So he done went to Russia. So while his country in colon, being colonized, Jomo Kenyatta in Russia learning. So you learn about that. But I learned that they was colonized and they learned, they learned English as children growing up. Like they, they tried to bring, they brought in the English language. And the English language dominated the minds of the children. So now you see these Africans, you're like, damn, they didn't took, so I, cause I thought it was like, it was like, like with Sojourner's Truth or Harriet Tubman. 
I thought they was going from black person to black person, getting them black people off the plantation. No, they're going to Caucasian people. No. So no, these brothers and sisters ain't just learned a second language, a second language. The English language was a part of their culture because Europe had came in and took over. Same thing with India. India was colonized for 200 years. So you have Indians, you, they speaking fluent English. You're like, damn, that's tight. They speaking, no. They grew up learning English in their school system. So I learned that from that book, right? So I say that because, again, you just don't know. And so to stay focused, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You do know. You do know. Bismillah. And then once you know, you can put that thing back together again. So now, it's just a manipulation. Some manipulation of these numbers. And you can take it up to high levels. You can take it to negative and positive. Okay, so this is the number scale. So then let's just, let's just get into it, right? Let me see, let me see how much time we got on this camera, right? La la ha la la. La la ha la la. Okay, there's gonna come a time. Well, I'm gonna I'm I'm shift the camera where I can hook it back up where we can keep it going. But let's go to, now again, if you go to www.fatihaduwasharia.com, then let's go to School of Mathematics, a law school of mathematics. Ah, okay. Mathematics is the black woman of the sciences. That's kind of deep. Now we don't really get into the homosexuality. So if you are a black woman, mathematician, that's, that's more like friend, like to love yourself, learn about yourself. If you're a black man, that's your wife, right? Or your sister, or your mama. But I looked at it how, I can't, I don't know whether God gave me that or I seen that. I think, I think, I don't know, I might have seen that. But when I, if I seen it, I was thinking more like, yeah, that's good, right? That's my wife. Your wife, brother. Not your girlfriend. Not your baby mama. All praise to Allah, Lord of the world. Okay, so let's go to... Okay, I got, a, I got it on the internet site as a theorem. Now, theorem, let me rewrite the number scale again. I'm going to leave the number scale up here. But let's stay focused. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Then we go to math, analysis. Then let me put the number scale up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So then I said, well, look, you dumb Negro, 400 slaves, get the hell on. No, what? You crazy? I believe in God. Yeah, nothing. Go back to the number scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Analyze it. Always understand it's math analysis. Well, look, we can say this is a natural number set. Right? Actually, it's a subset. We ain't going to talk about that. It's a subset because it's not to infinity. It's just to nine. So it's finite. Okay. It could be a natural number set. Analyze it with a zero. Now the zero there. Well, how, how come Mr. Sharia, how come them brothers and them sisters and Kemet, they don't got zero with that? Right? How come, what is God saying about zero? What does zero mean? Look now. 
If you go to the mathematical ruler, I got the oh, I got the ruler on here. Let's look at the ruler. Let's see how it is up here. If you go to the mathematical ruler, yeah, okay. Where the okay? I don't think you. No, nah, let's see if I. No, you got to click on it. Okay, you can't see it, but if you click on it, you'll see this symbol right here. What? What's he talking about? They try to give you what's the one dude, the Rosetta Stone, all of that. No, what's he talking about? They had to do years of trans. Like we're doing hieroglyphics now. You'll see this symbol. Now, intuitively, we didn't lost that knowledge about what we was like, what we were saying when we wrote that. But that's sort of like a circle. It doesn't have a dot in the middle. Now we can really get into all of that, but we're not gonna do that this time. But just understand, understand what we didn't just did now. Understand this. Okay. So you'll see that symbol on the ruler. And what I do want to show you about the trick knowledge, right? If you look at the ruler, it's a ruler now, where they were measuring to build everything, and, and, and Kim it, stiff-necked people now. But they got the one thing where it's the cat. Right, then they got something right here, that's the Aegean Islands. Okay, now, let's analyze this first. Now this is a, this is a measurement, this symbol, is a measurement, they got the brother, they got the brother, he looking this way, right? Then they got the other brother with his hands like this, right? These are measurements. But they got this symbol right here, it's a cat, and they got some type of, some type of thing right here. Understand the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the brothers and sisters from Arabia that started listening to Yaqub. The brothers and sisters from Arabia, just the Kaaba, started listening to Yaqub, Kimmy. Yaqub got 500, no, five. 59,999 black, black brothers and sisters. And they got on a boat. And they went to the Asian Islands. The Asian Islands is right here. You got Greece and Europe and all of that right here. But the Asian Islands is right here. Palestine is right there. He got these brothers and sisters. Yaku got these brothers and sisters from Kenya. They went to the Asian Islands. And he started grafting. He started grafting the black out of the black. Okay, why do I say that? I say that because when you see this symbol right here on the ruler, don't take my word for that. Look, go to the internet page, go to a law school of mathematics, go all the way down to the ruler, and you'll see this symbol right here. It's a cat, and you got this little thing right here in the background. Now, when you analyze the cat, it ain't, you know, I like cats, but it's not going to be like no cat you see now, like, running around the world. It's going to be like one of them, one of them cats from where we come from, right? It's going to be one of them cats, right? It got the little flavor to it. Cats are real good because when you're farming, you got something called rats. You got rats and you got mice. Now, all, all animals, or all animals are, are beautiful to me. And you got, certain, you got certain animals I don't mess with. Like, you got certain animals I don't kill. I don't, no, you got certain animals or certain insects I do kill. I kill roaches. I can't stand roaches. And I kill flies. I don't, <laughs> Oh, we need to learn how to, you know, how to pronounce that. 
but I kill flies. An ant, I love ants, but ants, ants, ants are not, not, not that smart. You might say, well, ants are very intelligent. No, ants, if, say, say, say if you're in a house, and somewhere in your house, right, you doing, you know, it might be where you brush your teeth, might be where you cook your food. And if the ants come up in there, right, they just going to come up in there and take over where you at. Now, yeah, I understand we're friendly and we all the creation of a law. So you tell the ants, no, nah, I, I work here. You got to go somewhere else. Now, they don't understand that. Now, or I don't know how to communicate to them to move on, because I done had, you know, I, I, I done had to deal with that trauma and killing, like, and killing ants. Like, when you see an ant, the black ones, the red ones, I mean, no, nah, them things look real beautiful. So, like, to, to kill all, a, whole, a whole bunch of them, right? So, but no, nah, you know, I, so it's not that I, I kill ants, but that's like, I'm still learning that. Like, I, you know, we try to numb ourselves but you still, Allah say you still didn't get rid of them damn ants. But you know the ants, but Allah also say, well, how come the ants keep coming around when you didn't told them that, right? So, but roaches, no, nah, we kill roaches because roaches cause disease. And again, Allah has created all these things for the wicked, not for me and you. We're just still here. So we kill roaches. We kill flies, right? And then I'm gonna tell you, like me, like with me, right? You ever seen the cartoon with the elephant? They had an elephant, right? Right? You, you know the elephant. And then he'll see the little mice. And be like, ah! <laughs> I still get that way with mice, right? I'm like, Cause mice so nasty. Like in these times right here now. We talking about 2024, American society? You got something crawling on the ground, slithering around in dark places? No, you don't want to have, listen now, I caught, I, I, I was messing with some, uh, like they say, they say when you go back to Africa, right, you got to be real, what they say, but it, I think it's kind of true, because we even got hieroglyphs that talk about the virus in the water, but they say when you go back to Africa, you got to be real conscious, like just drinking water because you catch that virus, right? So you know you, the luxuries that we that we have in America from slavery. Africa ain't never had no slaves for no four hundred years. Child slavery. So when you get them luxuries, right? So you lose conscious of what you really pose to know. So I messed around and had a cut on my finger, and then you know when we do voodoo. Right, we always use water. So I had some empty water. I had a water container that I just leave uncovered. That's the best type of water. Right, this water in these plastics. And I seen something where they said we got, like when we die now, they measuring certain amounts of plastics in our brain. Right, where you can have like, it's so much plastic around, we're breathing in plastic particles. So we try to leave the water uncovered and let the air mix in with it, right? But if you don't have it really correct, it can form like algae, right? So you know, as a Muslim, we, we keep it moving and then we'll come to it and then we'll clean it. So I mess around and I cut my finger, a little small cut. And uh, no, it wasn't even a cut. You know how you might bite, like when you do your fingernails and then it might be like some little excess. So I bit it off, right? And I ain't put no peroxide on it or nothing. So then I started doing the voodoo, but I had on some water that was just some, you know, I'd be farming, right? So my finger, you talking about some pain? My finger swole up so bad, it got infected, right? It swole up so bad, and you can, if you can still see it, it's like, it's still kind of pinkish, like an albino color. For nothing. Just like, let me get to you again. It was just, I did my fingernails, little piece was up, I just bit it off, little steam, right? I ain't putting no, I mean, you know, it's just a little steam. But I had never been, like, I had never been in that position where I would have some water just sitting out where it would get that virus, 
where that cut would be there. So then I, I did my voodoo, and then my fingers swollen. Oh, that's the worst. Because you like, like, it swell up so bad because it's infected with a virus that when you go to sleep, you can feel your heart pump, right? <laughs> so your heart pumping throughout your body. But right here, it's infected. Oh. I would tell, listen to what I tell you. When God, when God tell us that he wait for the wicked in their sleep, when they don't even go to sleep, you know how horrible that is? Like, look, now it's the daytime. We can eat food. We got a place where we can get some clean meat. We frying chicken. And then we want to get their sleep. God right there waiting for them. No, they're not going to sleep. So, so when my finger was infected, right, you know how you just be tired. You're like, damn, let me go to sleep. But when you close your eyes, tell me you're going to get some rest. No, that finger was throbbing, throbbing, throbbing. All oh, that thing was, ah. Oh. And as you can see, you can tell the severity. Because look, it's still discovered. That was, that, my finger was infected from that little cut with that virus for about seven, eight months, and it's still going on. I don't think my color will ever, you know, it's still, I mean, it's not ugly, right? But, you know, so I say that because when you look at the hieroglyphics, sometimes you will have that brother on that boat. He got that paddle, but then you see that serpent in that water. Right? And they say this serpent right here, that's the virus in the water. Right? Then they got stories where they were drinking beer because the water was so bad and all that, right? We talking about in Kimmy. So I say that, I say that because you say what well, Alexander the Great and why was these black people conquered? And you know it just seemed like a ghost. Kemet just seemed like a ghost city with some people that came in, if we so strong, right, how come we ain't there ruling? But you gotta realize it's a virus. God will remove you all kind of ways. Okay, so to, to get back focused, when you got Kemet here, the Asian Islands is right here. So if you go to the ruler, and you look at some of the measurements on the ruler, one of, the, one of the symbols is a cat. And you got something right here in the background. The cat is real good because these animals right here, they create that virus. If you go back to the European, uh, the Black Plague, look now. That virus came from dead bodies. I might have came from, I think it came from rats and dead bodies. But that virus removed half of Europe. We talk about we talk about what they did to us during the transatlantic slave trade, 100 million. But that virus removed half of the population of Europe. So if you start looking at virus attacks on the planet, viruses have removed kingdoms. This kingdom right here, I'm specifically thinking about the Byzantine. The Byzantine kingdom lost power because they caught a virus and it wiped out their entire civilization where they were weak. And then another military came in. So initially, the cat is good because if you farming or if you got any, any type of land on the ground level, that thing ain't gonna be clean. It's not gonna be nothing. It's not gonna be like like you talking about you looking for some type of anything, rats or mice, nothing. It's not going to be nothing. It's going to be clean. All that thing is beautiful. So that's initially why the cat did. But what I want you to understand is that where is technology is that, first of all, you don't know whether the cat looking at you or whether the cat looking at this. And then these brothers and these sisters, it's so beautiful. Because then they got this thing in the background, right? So, so really, they're they trying to say the cat looking at this, this to help you out. So say if the cat wasn't, say if they just had a cat like this. Well, you don't know whether the cat looking at you or looking 
into the board. So then they put the thing right here to let you know the cat looking at this right here. But he still could be looking at you. That's the technology of it. So then when you talk about killing, now look now, this is a symbol on the ruler. So when you talk about Kimmich, right, in so many ways, Kimmich could be the cat. And this is the Asian island where they're doing the grafting. So, okay. Okay. So you can take a look at that for yourself. And again, these are things to help us put our brain back together. Okay, we got a little bit of time left, right? I think what I'm going to do, if we can be patient, I'm going to kind of rearrange everything, and then we're going to try to pick it back up. Lila, hallelujah. Lila, hallelujah.